Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jay Shock last here. Um, it's four twelve a.m. on uh, Saturday, June eleventh, and uh, why am I awake? Um, <laughs> uh, I randomly woke up, as I often do, and uh, started flipping through my phone and uh, happened to see this tweet that somebody retweeted that I follow um, from the Orlando Police Department um, about a somebody named Christina Grimmy um, passing away um, actually I think it was one of my followers uh, Anthony um, you know with deep regret we have confirmed Christina Grimmy at the real Grimmy has died from her injuries so it was kind of weird to me I have no I had no idea who this person was and then I, I started looking into it and um, <laughs> uh, what a world we live in right um, as many of you may or may not know I uh, in my time uh, used to be a, a concert photographer for a very long time um, and uh, this is just the worst of the worst. Um, you know, so she was a contestant on The Voice. And um, she also had 3 million YouTube followers. And um, she was 22 years old, living her dream. And a man walked up to her tonight and just decided to kill her. And for what? For what? Like, I, there, there's nothing in this world that can make me understand why I'm sitting here at 4 o'clock in the morning, unable to go back to sleep because of just the shock of, of hearing this. And the only thing I could think of was to come right here and, and do a video. I, I just, I don't want all my vlogs to be about sad stuff. I want to do happy ones too but I just it's worked out this way um, um, I was never a big Pantera fan but you know the first one that really shook me to my core was Dimebag Daryl passing away a fan in the show just shooting him and killing him while he's on stage playing for nothing, for fucking nothing, a life ends, and um, that was kind of in the height of when I was going to shows and, and shooting photos, and you know, if that happened in a show I was at, like, I would have been in the middle of that gunfire, you know, and it changed me, like, it, it more than I know, like, there are things that happen, and it's just like, wow, this can happen anywhere and over nothing. And I just can't wrap my head around it, you know? Like, I've had people that I've despised and hated, hated, and hate is such a strong word, and there's at least two people that I've run into in life that I could use the word because of the things they've done to people I love. And I don't want to get into that, but, like, at no point have I ever felt like I, I, I need to end their life. And, and trust me, like, <laughs> there's enough there to want to feel that way. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a fucking adult, and I cope, and I deal with those issues, you know? And I know we have some really bad mental health issues in this country, in this world. It's certainly not exclusive to just America. I mean, it, it just it is definitely a big part, a bigger thing in America, obviously. And I, I get that. And uh, we need to own that, you know, because our our people are not doing enough. But 22 years old, man, life, life hadn't even started yet, you know? Like, I remember being 22 years old, and 
I barely remember, like, like what, what it's like to be that age, you know? Like, it was only 13 years ago for me, you know? Like... <sighs> and she was living her dream. 22 years old, she was on The Voice. And, and she did what she loved on YouTube. Made music videos. Had 3 million, like... Three million subscribers like I can't even wrap my head around that like I'm about to hit 160,000 and and that like blows my mind I can't even imagine having that many people love and appreciate what I do enough to just click the subscribe button you know whether they ever watch a video of mine again you know just showing that kind of respect and um I, <sighs> There's nothing about this story that's good. And I think more than anything, my heart goes out to her brother. Because, you know, he's got to live with this the rest of his life. This awful feeling of, I could have stopped it. And there's nothing he could do. Nothing. Like, it, he's going to probably feel like he did something wrong or he blamed himself because he tackled the guy that shot her and and the, the guy killed himself basically in his arms. And thankfully, there's no, uh, that I'm aware of, nothing happened to him. But um, it just as easily could have, you know? Like, this guy's got a gun. And he tackled him, and he turned the guy, fortunately, turned the gun on himself. Not that that, you know, helps solve anything or brings anybody back, but I'm just, uh, there's a part of me that's just glad that he did us all the favor, you know? We don't have to spend money prosecuting him and housing him. Just get the fuck off this earth. You don't deserve to live. And I feel like everybody deserves to live, you know? People make mistakes and, um, and things happen, but, like, this is not a mistake. This is not a, hey, I fucked up. This is, you know, taking another person's life. I just, and I just can't wrap my head around it. Like, and I'm struggling with this for some reason. You know, I I feel like I wish I didn't even look at my phone, but it would have come to me at some point anyway, you know? Like, I'm going to read about it. It's all over Twitter already. Um, you know, like, there's a lot of people that uh, I follow that are, um, you know, tweeting about it. And um, I, I just, I don't know. So, I mean, I turn to the one thing that I know, which is, you know, talking about it on camera, you know, getting in front of a microphone and talking about it. I didn't know a dime bag at all. Um, but, uh, you know, he, um, I met him a few months before he passed away and, um, he was on tour with Damage Plan, and I don't know who else they were on tour with, but um, they played a big festival in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, uh, called Loco Bazooka, and um, I was with along with my buddy Jeremy Saffer, who is an amazing photographer. Um, if you've seen the the latest in this moment video, uh, he he was the person that recorded it and directed it and all that stuff. Um, you know, just I worked so closely with him. He was such a uh, such a good friend, an amazing person. He's one of the people I think, uh, other than Anthony, that I I I saw it through. You know, like I'll never forget waking up to a text message from him. You know, that Dimebag had been killed, and uh, you know there we were hanging out backstage at this big festival. There's like fifty thousand people there. Um, I don't know, maybe not that many, maybe more like 30,000, but there's like a lot of people and, um, you know, I'm just standing there and Vinnie Paul from Pantera walks up to me 
sees me wearing a Patriots hat and is like, hey, bro, you got this, the Cowboys score. And I'm like baffled. Uh, I'm like, yeah, man, uh, I don't remember what it was, but like, you know, I looked it up on my phone even back then and, and gave him the score. And, you know, he uh, just, I'm not as concerned to pretend I knew him. This is the only time I ever met him. Um, before I knew it, I was standing next to him on stage while he's playing, taking pictures of him. And it's like probably one of the more amazing experiences as a photographer in my life. Um, but then there's his brother who, uh, Dimebag, is, is hanging out by all the guitars as people are loading him in and out. And he's talking to uh, Jonathan and Matt from Shadows Fall. And he's holding Jonathan's guitar, and John and Matt are both handling his guitar, sending it back and forth. And they're just sitting there chatting it up about their dream, you know, guitars. And uh, a few months later, it was the last tour stop. Um, I saw Damage playing twice, once that day. And then on the last night of their tour with Shadows Fall, and damage no um their damage plan and um the haunted and um there might have been one other band that played but uh you know and then like four days later i wake up to a message of a text message from jeremy saffer that dimebag had been killed like and it, it changed me, man. Like, I used to go to hundreds of concerts a year. Like, I've seen my favorite band Seven Dust 30 times alone. Just Seven Dust, you know? I talk about Shadows Fall. I've probably seen them 20 times over the years. And, you know, Kill Switch Engage, I've probably seen 12 to 15 times. You know, and there's bands, like, that I've seen by accident, non-point. I have seen Nonpoint at least 15 times just completely by accident. Never once going to see them. They just happen to be touring like with other bands and you know like just there's like something special about going to a concert, you know? Um you, you go to escape, you know? Like we all like I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I got a shitty life. I I have a good life. I mean, but I I deal with my fair share of of stress and drama and and all of that and you know when I when I go to something like a concert or I play video games like I do that to escape that nonsense you know to escape the stress of a 40 hour a week job or whatever it may be and you know, like you feel like you're owed some level of <sighs> Safety, like I said, I woke up like stone cold out of sleep, and uh, it's almost 4:30 now, and I would normally just be back in bed sleeping, but I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Like I just, I can't. I can't imagine what her brother's going through right now. Like. The fucked up world we live in, man. Like, just... Why can't we just love each other? You know? Like... I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're black or you're... You know... Asian or... Indian or African or... You know, Antarctican or... My dog licking himself in the background. Uh, I mean, I don't care where you're from. You know, as long as you're not from New York and a Yankees fan, you're probably a good person. Um, I just, uh, I mean, it hurts to say the Yankee fans might be good people too, but like, like, why are we doing this? Just what would possess somebody to like do that to another person? I don't get it. I don't ever want to get it. I just, I just can't, can't wrap my head around it, guys. I just, her brother tackled the guy, and now he's going to live with this the rest of his life, you know? What if I was faster? What if I got there sooner? You know, what could I have done? And it's not his fault. 
There's nothing you could have done. There's nothing that can prepare you for a, a psycho pulling a gun out of nowhere and shooting and murdering your sister. I mean, the whole Grimmy family, I just... Their fans, like... My heart goes out to you. This is this is awful. This is this is one of the worst like worst things that can happen because it's a safe place. Like I'm not all about that safe space life, you know, that all these protesters put themselves in. But like think about being in Paris, the Eagles of Death Metal, doing a show in Paris and like these extreme Muslim fanatics decide that's what they're gonna that's where they're gonna go and just open fire and just kill so many people. People that were just there to enjoy their love of an art of music. She was meeting with fans, you know, like One of the coolest things that I ever experienced, I'm not the biggest Slipknot fan, but I've been a fan of the band, you know? And I'll always be a fan of Corey Taylor because of what I saw one day. They were playing this, like, smaller, uh, like, club tour. Uh, they played a place called the Palladium in Worcester, Mass. And they were on tour with um, Fear Factory and Chimera and somebody else um and i was shooting that show and i got there early um and i'm walking through the parking lot behind the building and i just see this massive group of like i don't know probably 50 kids just in a circle and i look in the middle of that circle and there's Corey taylor and um He's just standing there, and, and every once in a while, somebody would walk into the middle of the circle and take a picture with him or, you know, give him a high five or a hug. And But he just sat there, and everybody sat there, circled around him, and he must have stood there for an hour just talking to people, interacting with people, and, and just, you know, truly showing an appreciation that a band at that level at that point in time even like is unprecedented you know there were probably 3,000 people at the show they easily could have put 10,000 people into the arena that was just across the way the DCU center and um, what a thrill for those people too you know and and that's what music is all about you know escapism and and just falling in love with the melody and the sound and just like I listened to a few of her songs before I made this video because you know I just need to figure out who she was and again I'm not sitting here pretending like I'm like this huge fan or anything I'm not but she had a beautiful voice and she's 22 years old 22 she's a baby and she was doing what she loved and Huh. I'm sorry, I don't mean to yawn, but like I said, it's like 4.30 in the morning and I should go try to go back to sleep. Um, this is like my my escape, you know, like YouTube. That's, that's what I do to feel that creativity. I've always been a very creative person. You know, it used to be writing and photography and and now it's like YouTube. Like I just feel like this really cool creative feeling you know and um, it's the worst I mean I know there's a lot of bad things in life that are out there you know like f I get it and, you know but like this is just I, f I feel I feel violated and I don't even go to concerts that much anymore you know like, I feel like these are the exact type of places where 
or even like the movie theater shooting out in Colorado, you know, for the Black Knight, you know, like you go to movies to escape it all and just put yourself into another world and we have to deal with people like this and it's fucked up. Um, I'm going to try doing more happier videos. Like <laughs> I don't want all my vlogs to be this way. Like be sad and mopey and half awake. But I, I just, I don't even know if I'm going to post this yet. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. And, uh, Uh, my heart, my heart goes out to that family, um, the Grimmy family, especially your brother. Um, I hope, I hope someday he finds some sort of peace. I know it's not going to be any day soon and maybe it never comes. That would be awful because it ain't his fault. He probably saved lives by tackling this guy and. Letting him kill himself. I mean, I'm sure he wanted to be the one to pull that trigger himself, but. Uh, I'm going to try going back to sleep, guys. Um, I don't even know what to say to you guys at this point. Like, I just. Uh, Thank you for giving me a place where I can talk into a microphone for 22 minutes about whatever it may be. Like, I'm just noticing now my fan is going in the background. So, um, it just like, shows you how I just kind of like, I got to get in front of the microphone. I got to talk about this, you know, like, I don't feel better. I don't feel any better. I don't know what I really got out of it. But, um, I don't know. I'm going to try to go back to sleep. Um, hopefully some happier stuff soon. To the Grimmy family, I'm just so sorry for your loss. And, uh, I mean, my heart goes out to all of our fans. And it's just awful. It's just awful. <laughs>